Hello guys and welcome back to my channel for another episode of the Tactic Tester. Today we have another content creator willing to throw their hat in the ring and take on the Tactic Tester gauntlet. We will get into their tactic and who that person is very, very shortly. But first of all, we'll remind you guys of the rules and the current state of our leaderboard. <laughs> So guys, as always with this series, all tactics must have a proven record of success or achievement. And in most cases, these have been tested by the creators themselves. All tactics will use the same team and fixture set for the test. Obviously, in this case, we are using Arsenal. No transfers will be allowed by Arsenal in either transfer window. Tactics will be loaded in and the entire season will be simulated in its entirety and all points, wins, goals scored and win percentage etc will be collected and displayed at the end of each video to find the best tactic out there. So in terms of our current leaderboard guys, this is what we're looking at. In last week's episode, you guys would have seen pressing forward FM come into third place with his 4-4-2, his back to basics 4-4-2. Um, However, we do still have Mike at the top of the list with his impressive 4-2-3-1, which returned a very, very good 73.85% win ratio. As we said, guys, this is a very impressive tactic. And let's get into today's creator and show you their shape. So then, guys, we are back at Arsenal. We have a new creator. We have a new tactic. And today, I want to introduce you guys to Mr. Spaceman's Fighter Jet Tactic. Now, obviously, as you can see, named Mr. Spaceman. All of his links and stuff will be down in the description below. Make sure you go and check him out. He actually was one of my opponents in the latest lockdown tournament and gave me a very, very tough game. I don't think he used this formation, though. I definitely would have remembered it. Um, but as you can see, it's a very, very interesting formation obviously in that fighter jet formation or shape rather shall we say so he's obviously got the, the the points of it basically is what i'm trying to distinguish and show you guys but not doing a very good job of it um obviously we will do a quick little run through of the team and the positions that he is running and then obviously we will do the quick pick so you guys can see what sort of players will occupy these positions so starting things off he does have a sweeper keeper on attack it's going to be very interesting to see how leno handles that inverted wing backs on both sides both on support that's going to be interesting i assume it is going to be bellerin and tierney but you never know uh one solitary ball playing defender i think this is where this tactic is going to get uh, become unstuck with arsenal because let's be honest the arsenal defense is not the strongest at all obviously he does have two half backs who will drop um not really sure how this is going to work with arsenal to be honest not really sure having Granite Xhaka maybe a my op my opinion you're gonna have Granite Xhaka and probably David Luiz as the two halfbacks and then maybe Gabriel or holding as the ball playing defender I I'm very intrigued to see what the quick pick does bring for this uh left and right uh, midfielders both set as wingers both on attack um two attacking midfielders on support and then one complete forward up top so I it's going to be interesting to see which one of Aubameyang and Lacazette misses out in this shape off the quick pick um obviously there is uh instructions on the left hand side I'm not going to run through them all guys if you want to get them take a look uh there or I will leave a link to the down or to Mr Spaceman he has put this on uh, the Steam Workshop so I will leave a link down below for you guys to go over and check that out and get this tactic in game yourselves um so, without any further ado then, I guess, it's quick pick time. Let's see what the assistant manager has to say. And obviously, Leno in goal. Bellerin and Tierney oper operate in those two inverted wingback roles, as I kind of expected. Gabriel is the lone centre-back. Then Elneny and Thomas Partey. Mm, that doesn't fill me. These three do not fill me with the most confidence. To be perfectly honest as a defensive unit i mean it feels like it's going to be very clogged up in this central midfield area with the two inverted wing backs um you'd imagine the two half backs are going to drop to basically make a back three which i 
I don't think that's going to work with Thomas Partey. And then obviously the in inverted um, wing backs will sort of sit where the half backs are in terms of the graphic on the screen. In terms of the analysis, though, he's covered most of the key areas, to be fair to him. Very interesting. Uh, Reese Nelson and uh, Saka, the, the youngsters on the wings in the left and right midfield spots. Willian and Mazu Ozil as the attacking midfielders. And Bamiang gets the nod as that complete forward. Obviously, some interesting players who do miss out. Um, Lacazette being the main one. Uh, Ceballos, again, another interesting one. Um, you'd like to think that Lacazette, Ceballos, people like Maitland-Niles, Kolasinac, Eddie Nketiah, um, and Granit Xhaka, loads of th th these players will get minutes throughout the season. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. But that is the quick pick. That is everything done. Let's simulate the season, and we can come back, and I will show you guys how this fighter jet tactic got on. So then guys, it is the end of the season and we are at the home screen and the first thing that I can see is that Arsenal finished in fifth. Um, just one point offside the top four, which is actually not too bad. That goal difference of plus 44 is very, very impressive. I've also just noticed Newcastle have somehow snuck into seventh with a minus 13 goal difference. Absolutely baffling. If we run through some of the player stats, it looks like, actually, it looks like... Look like looks like they've been in third, second or third most of the season. And then unfortunately it's dropped off. Obviously, we do know in this simulation there are some tough games towards the end of the season against Chelsea and Manchester United to finish things off. Liverpool winning the title on 98 points as well is mightily impressive, I must admit. In terms of the player stats, Lacazette top goal scorer, Aubameyang highest average rating. Um, lots of assist leaders, 14 apiece between William Reese Nelson, Aubameyang and Saka. Um, which means I can only assume if they've got 14, 28, come on, Steve, 56, 56 appearances between uh, 56 assists, sorry, between four of them. I can only assume this tactic has scored a lot of goals. Uh, Gabriel with the best completion, um, best pass completion, sorry, Aubameyang with the most player of the matches and Gabriel with the most yellow cards of 22 yellow cards. Jesus, he must have been suspended for ages this season. However, no red cards. That's probably because this, this formation has limited the amount of David Luiz and Granite Xhaka time on the pitch. Uh, potentially so there we go um i've also just noticed notable highlights on the right hand side very pleased with arsenal's convincing 3-0 fa cup final victory over liverpool so there is some silverware in here let's go over to the competitions tab okie dokie so obviously we know i'm going to go from right to left as i always do so right hand side runners up in the community shield losing out to liverpool no real shame there carabao cup knocked out in the fourth round by everton not the not the best result it is a decent premier league side it is the team that finished in six so that's not the biggest issue there from memory the arsenal board don't actually value the carabao cup as anything at all um so obviously they've won the fa cup there it's very very nice beating liverpool in the final knocked out in the semi-finals of the europa league um by chelsea which is interesting because i'm pretty sure chelsea would be Champions League? Chelsea are Champions League. So they didn't go through their group. Sevilla and Borussia Mönchengladbach went through instead of Chelsea. And then it looks like they would have gone on a little bit of a tear in the Europa League then. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, we can get through that in a second. It's very interesting to see some of the teams in here. I assume that that means the final's been played. It has been played between Chelsea and Manchester City, the Europa League final, and Chelsea winning that one on penalties. What in the world? Oh, sorry. I, I, I know this is going off track. I need to take a look at uh, Man City's Champions League group. Lazio, Real Madrid. Oh, that's a bad showing from Pep. That is a very bad showing from Pep. Anyway. Back to the back to the topic at hand, Steve. Um, all in all, I think this is a very good season. Um, I think Arsenal fans would actually be all right with this. The, the expectation for the Premier League was to qualify for the Euro Cup, and they've done that. Um, the expectation was to reach the semi-finals of the Europa League. They did do that, and obviously get knocked out by a team that, in theory, should be a Champions League team. Uh, picking up the FA Cup is always nice. Silverware is always good. Carabao Cup, they don't really care about. And then obviously the Community Shield again is something that the board do not care about so into the schedule first and foremost then let's take a look at how things got on so opening game of the season the curtain raiser liverpool at wembley they lost 4-3 and 
as again in this game it seems 89th minute goal from Roberto Firmino winning Liverpool this game it always seems to be in the last five or ten minutes that Liverpool sneak this one it's very crazy to see that as a repetition um the first result though that does stand out is beating Liverpool on penalties in the Carabao Cup third round Lacazette doing his business and getting the 94th minute penalty lots of pressure there and then obviously for the tie to go to penalties and it be decided an Arsenal win on penalties is very good solid start to the Premier League season a 3-0 4-0 and then another 4-0 um, right off the rip before losing to Everton in that Carabao Cup fourth round league starting superbly though 3-6-9-12 points on the spin before drawing against Leeds 25th minute drawn against Leeds at Ellen Road um, Europa League group, Dinamo Moscow, Rapid Vienna and CFR Cluj, as you would expect, Arsenal have gone through there, played 6-1-6, six, six, very impressive showing there, Premier League still going pretty well, disappointed Arsenal fans would be with the 2-1 defeat to Tottenham away, uh, also a 2-2 draw at um, Selhurst Park against Crystal Palace, not necessarily the best, 6-1 against Rapid Vienna, that is a, that is a batter in there. Oh my god, there is some absolutely ludicrous results in here. Losing 4-1 to Brighton is a very interesting one. Very interesting to see that. Brighton are always a team in my saves, personally, that do really, really well. And I'm not really sure why. They always seem to just be, really be up there. But the next result that has really caught my eye, guys, is a 7-0 demolition. And there's no other way to call it. It is an absolute demolition of Chelsea at the Emirates. 7-0. Um, that was sparked by Azpil Equator being sent off in the 23rd minute and then all the goals have come after that. A hat-trick for Aubameyang, a hat-trick for Lacazette and then Danny Ceballos chipping in with that seventh one there. Looks like they're going great guns in the Premier League and actually, towards the start of the season, they're not conceding a huge amount. Um, so it's very interesting. It seems like they're definitely scoring a lot of goals as well. In the Christmas period, though, beat Man City at home, lose to Man City away. Sharing those points against Man City is not too shabby at all. This is a very, very good month of January with some very impressive, big, high-scoring results in the cup competitions. Uh, beating Swansea 5-1 and beating Crystal Palace 7-0. Wow. Is that one, two, three, four, five goals? Five goals for Saka in that game is absolutely crazy. Very good month of January, though. And then we move forward into February. Um, disappointing probably to lose to Manchester United at home. Two injury time goals, one in each half, Rashford and Lindelof. Um, a little bit of a difficult one to take. Europa League first knockout round though against Real Sociedad. That is a very good win. Sociedad are a very good team. 1-1 in the away leg before beating them 2-1 at home. Aubameyang ideally getting the job done in the 92nd minute, but William Jose making it making it tense at the Emirates towards the end with a 93rd minute there. Uh, let's move on, let's move on, let's move on. Into the next round of the Europa League though, Basel, 3-2 at the Emirates and then 3-3 away from home. Away goals, nope, not even away goals. Aggregate deciding that, but Arsenal with the three away goals is very impressive nonetheless. Beating West Brom 5-1 as well in the Premier League. Another very good result. This is a very high scoring tactic looking at it. 4-0 um, against Burnley as well. Four goals for Lacazette. And then, wow, FA Cup quarterfinal, League One Ipswich at the Emirates. And get taught a lesson, boys. 8-0. Jesus. This is a ridiculously high scoring tactic, this. Okay, so we move on. Um, in the Premier League, so that things still going great. Ajax, again, in the in the Europa League. Quarter-final first leg, losing 1-0 away from home, getting it done 3-0 at the Emirates, though. Things going pretty well here, and then they, I assume they start to become unstuck. Losing to Everton, it's, it's one of the first teams that I've just noticed that have done the double over this team. Um, then we move on. So, FA Cup semi-final, ooh, this has been a very nice little run in the FA Cup, I must admit. A lot of lower league teams, so you've, you've had Fulham, Ipswich, and Sheffield Wednesday. It's a nice path, I'm not going to argue with it. You have to beat what's in front of you, and this tactic definitely has done that in the FA Cup this season. 3-1, getting it done in extra time, actually, by the looks of things. Aubameyang uh, being cancelled out by Josh Windass, and then Willian and Alexandra Lacazette making the difference as i said lost to everton then europa league semi-final time against chelsea 
Mason Mount cancelling out Aubameyang's first uh, got first goal of the tie, drawing with Brighton again, and then 6-6-2 six, six, in the away leg is a little bit of a tough one. Um, interestingly, Kai Havertz and Timo Werner actually score in Football Manager, unlike real life, where they do not do as well. Um, then, yeah, it kind of falls apart towards the end of the season after this. It usually does happen this way, especially if there's a lot of fixtures. If you if you have a deep run in the FA Cup and you also have a deep run in Europe, this this chunk towards the end of the season, April and May, is just carnage. Um, especially as, obviously, they're not allowed to sign anybody as part of this simulation. Um, so, again, another loss to Everton there. Uh, disappointing. Um, beating Liverpool in the FA Cup final 3-0, very impressive. Another result with Wembley getting their own back for the Community Shield in a game, in my opinion, that matters more. Um, but then what have we got? 4-3 at Stamford Bridge, atoning for the Europa League tie not too long earlier on in the month, 10, just almost 10 days before. Um, getting a late one there, Lacazette with that winner in the 80th minute. And then obviously the two games to end the season, this game must have been postponed. Um, Liverpool getting the job done 4-1 at Anfield before losing to Manchester United on the final day of the season, which unfortunately these two results coupled together meant that they missed out on the top four. So if we go into the squad and we have a quick little review of the squad, let's take a look at things. So who made the most appearances? Leno made the most appearances, closely followed by Mezzo Ozil with 53 appearances. Willian and Thomas Partey up there. Uh, Saka definitely getting some good minutes from left midfield. We go in terms of goals then, guys. We order it by goals. The Lacazette top with 38. Aubameyang with 27. I've just noticed Aubameyang's injured. What is wrong with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang right now? What is wrong with him? What is wrong with him? Injury. Twisted ankle. Suffered in Liverpool's 4-1 defeat to Liverpool towards the end of the season. So he, he actually missed the final game of the season, which is interesting. Um... Yeah, so 22 goals for Willian, 14 for Ceballos, 13 for Saka, 9 for Nelson, 8 for Maitland-Niles. Wow, Jesus Christ. Um, 7 for Ozil and Ketia chipping in with 6. There is a lot of goals in this team, guys. An absolute plethora of goals. We go over to assists. We already know that we've got 4 guys on 14. Um, so Aubameyang, Saka, Reese Nelson and Willian all on 14. You've also got 12 for Ozil. 11 for Maitland-Niles and an 8 for Kolasinac and Kieran Tierney on that left-hand side. What is up with Kieran Tierney? Hamstring strain again in that Liverpool game. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, goals are plenty in this team, guys. Absolute goals are plenty. Anything else? Highest average rating. Who does this go to? Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with 41 appearances, 27 goals, 14 assists. That is a superb, superb result and um, he has been very very good this season despite getting injured towards the end of it so if we go into the team report guys we take a look at the analyst report as we always do in these saves opening this up the general performance look at that goals per game 2.53 goals per game in terms of the last 50 games of course um scores a high number of chances expected goals per minutes um per 90 minutes is very very high uh, wins a relatively average ratio of tackles we are performing above average statistically um expected goals per game almost two expected uh xg per game which is absolutely crazy they are conceding slightly more than the average but again i think that's more down to arsenal rather than the tack uh the tactic itself if you built a tactic uh, built players into this tactic i think you could definitely really do some damage with it guys in terms of scoring this is kind of where you're expecting to see arsenal uh just over 16 percent conversion rate is absolutely massive with an average of what's that 15 16 shots per game that's mad that is mad that is the most clinical in the premier league uh manage more shots per average um and are more clinical than a lot of teams rather than a lot of teams we are more clinical than all the teams every team we are more clinical than this year in terms of conceding, though, this is where we're going to have a little bit of an issue. Um, quiet, but also leaky. Now, as I said, this is where I thought there might be an issue with that one ball playing defender and the two halfbacks that would drop alongside him. I think that's not necessarily the most solid defensive unit, and Arsenal definitely don't have the players to cope with that. 
Um, our defensive statistics are very interesting. We face fewer shots per game than the average, but we can see more goals than we'd be expected from the number of shots we face. So uh, opposition conversion rate is almost 17 and a half, 18 percent off of eight shots faced per game. Definitely shipping more goals than they should have. In terms of formations, as you can see things here, guys, uh, in terms of clear-cut chances, it's very interesting, actually, looking at the statistics for this over the last 50 games. Minus 18 in terms of clear-cut chances created. A chance is created every 40 minutes by this team. However, a chance is created against them every 34 minutes. So definitely not the most defensively sound formation we have seen. And it seems to really struggle against the 4-2-3-1 wide um, with the minus 28 clear-cut chances between them. But... I have to say, guys, this is a very, very high scoring tactic. So, and, and to be honest, in terms of the competitions, everything's gone pretty well. They've got really far in Europe, fifth in the Premier League, won the FA Cup. I'm very intrigued to see where this one does come out, guys. So I'm going to get the calculator out. I'm going to work out where it lands on our leaderboard. And I'll be back to show you guys that in just a second. So guys, we are back with Mr. Spaceman on the leaderboard. I will say he is not last. There are definitely creators that he has beaten. However, this is turning into one of the most competitive series I've ever seen in terms of how close things are in and around that leaderboard. So Mr. Spaceman's 3-4-2-1, one, one in one trophy winning in the FA Cup, finished fifth in the Premier League with 73 points, a very good points return that we have seen um, his goal scored though, this is where he goes absolutely berserk. Um, 163 goals scored. That whilst that isn't the highest on the board, um, the goals per game is the highest on the board, securing a goals per game of 2.67, which is just absolutely ridiculous. The amount of goals that this tactic puts in the back of the net is second to none that we've seen thus far. However, as noted, 82 goals against is where this has had a few issues. The win percentage comes out at 62.29% and is a very, very interesting formation. If you are the better team, I feel, if you're the better team, this tactic can absolutely decimate people. So then, guys, that is it. We've had another creator on the board and Mr. Spaceman's fighter jet tactic has definitely impressed me in terms of its goal return. And that goals per game is just absolutely outstanding, guys. If you think you have a tactic that will win this tactic tester that will put you at the top of the leaderboard, don't forget to let me know down in the comments below or reach out to me on social media. All my links are in the description and let me know what tactic you want me to run in this. And if you think you've got one that can win, do let me know. That's where I'm going to leave things for today, though, guys. If you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to drop a like on it and subscribe to my channel for daily football manager videos. I'll be bringing out a new series on a Sunday coming soon. It will be a retro themed football manager. Um, but hopefully I will catch you guys for another episode of this series next Saturday at 5 p.m. Take care, guys, and I'll see you then.